I'm down here at Sea Town, Platters of Pancake, hoping to catch plaice and mackerel. So I've um, grabbed some white bait off the um, beach. Taking a few up there. That's my bait for the day. I like to keep my stuff tidy on the kayak. You don't want hooks going into anything. And because I'm using a short rod on the kayak, I cut the um, mackerel feathers down so it's only got three hooks. The pressure's on because we've got no dinner tonight. I said I'd catch some fish for the barbecue. There's my 20 gram spoon, something like that. And three feathers on the back. So I'm going to paddle out to about 40 foot of water and then start fishing for place, gurnard and whatever's down there really. Oh, we've got fish on my looks of it. Oh yeah, lovely. They come off so easy, it's why I'm doing a nice slow steady retrieve. When I'm going for the mackerel, I like to keep it all quite heavy duty just because the last thing you want is your mackerel feathers getting caught up around your main line. And there's two on there. And I really don't want them to fall off. There we are, get the boat as quickly as possible. Hooks away from the dry suit, bail arm undone. Oh, there is a third one on there. And that's why I have the lure on the back. Good, it's dinner sorted. I'll go back in now. No. <laughs> He's hooked with all three points. I've noticed the mackerel have been getting bigger and bigger each year. I'm sure that's true. Um, this one's so good, it's actually had two feathers. One, that's why it wasn't a full house. Two. And I'm sure that's because the shoals have got smaller. So there's less competition between the shoals, so the fish have got bigger. Smaller shoals, bigger fish. Could be nonsense. But I think it's true. This little joey's undersized. But if I put that back, it will die. It's been out of the water too long, they need high oxygen levels, it's touched my hands, it's been distressed. So that's gonna go on the barbecue as well. It can be Fraser's. Yeah, so whenever there's white baits around, there's normally a few mackerel not far behind. And if there's a few mackerel not far behind, there's normally a few bass as well. I'm going a bit further out, I think. It's this fine balance between sport fishing and harvesting something for the plate. This is a much lighter setup. Uh, quantum, Shima uh, quantum energy reel uh, on a Shimano Vengeance bass rod. Cheap setup, thin line. I think that braid's about a 10 pound braid. And that's on a two ounce lead. Let's do some, uh, some fishing on the bottom. I'm going to try these uh, white bait along the bottom. Such fragile little things. You see those down in the water? That's a good few feet down. And those white baits that I've dropped down have been nailed straight away. A firm grab, I was ended up with another hook in the finger. See how clear the water is and why it's necessary to come out so far sometimes to catch fish. I spent a fortune on beach casting gear and you can end up spending another 300 quid on a rod to try and give you an extra 20 yards cast. Absolute bonkers when you look back on it. So a kayak soon pays for itself, it seems expensive, it is an inexpensive initial investment but it pays for itself quite quickly. And these use it up and these are really stinky. Horrible stinky things. This has gone inside out. That's so why I like to leave a little tag end on my, on my uh, when I tie off a hook. You can probably just about see the line coming out there, it just helps keep the worm on and up the line. No, it's been hit straight away, I don't know by what. <laughs> I'm guessing that's mackerel, but we'll see. No, that's not mackerel. <laughs> that's been absolutely thumped. Maybe it's a pouting or something. There we go, there's a, <laughs> it's a pouting. There we go. A bib, a sort of pinkish silvery colour. Pouting's uh, got the stripes. See, there you go. Such gentle bites. That's an all right fish, you know. But it didn't even know it was hooked, nor did I. So the, the bites were so soft. Wasn't even sure. That has to be a place. Oh no, it's not a place. <laughs> has to be a famous last words, isn't it? Again, on the white bait. They do like their fish baits, these fish. Lip hooked, thankfully. So it's only a young one. That's how, you, that's how you hold them, like that. They've got a pocket there that you can grab hold of. 
lovely rasping gnashers there at the front. I remember my friend Tom put that one on his lap just briefly and it bit down on him. The most beautiful love bite right on his thigh. It's another species but we won't be putting that on the barbecue. Thornback Ray. Off you go buddy. Gone. So no place yet. I don't know why I want a place. Just what I come to Sea Town for normally. Got the mackerel I guess. Rubby dubby. <laughs> so there you go, that's what's giving me those tiny little bites. Just think you can get his mouth around that hook. Uh, that is a, a blenny or a goby, I'm not very good. Yeah, there we go. I used to love catching these from the rock pools. Right. Away from that rough ground now, which is good. There we go. There's the drag. Fish on. Oh, this is brilliant fun, isn't it? So much better than standing on the beach catching nothing, watching your rods. What have we got now then? What have we got? Oh, it's a blooming mackerel. <laughs> Must have picked up on the way down. It's good and though. It's a big one. Wind is going to pick up over the next hour, big time. Put a lot of line out to try and get these baits on the deck. Oh, would you believe it? It's another mackerel. Feels more place like. Feels like a place. And it is a place. What I might do is cut the line on this. Because otherwise, he's a goner. I think he's going to have too many days ahead of him, but at least he'll get a few more. Not sure that it is, but it's pulling back all right. See something ray like coming up. <laughs> that is a ray. Phil has arrived. I feel a bit cheeky, but I will have to come off the water fairly soon. Hi, right, buddy. <laughs> Such amazing little fish. Roka. Off you go.